بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Today we will start with uh, Surah Al-Buruj Surah Al-Buruj is a Meccan Surah uh, with the consensus of the scholars There is no disagreement regarding the Surah being a Meccan Surah uh, the name of the surah is Al-Buruj, according to the majority of the uh, books of Tafsir. It was revealed after Surah Al-Shams and uh, before Surah Al-Teen. There is no uh, particular reason for the revelation of uh, the surah. Although the main theme of the surah is regarding the uh, people of the uh, trench, uh, yet there is no indication that this is the reason of revelation uh, for the surah. Uh, Allah starts off the surah with an oath saying, وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الْبُرُوجِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَوْعُودِ وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الْبُرُوجِ Allah is swearing, he's saying by the meaning of the uh, ayah, by the sky containing great planets and by the promised day and by the witness and what is witnessed destroyed or cursed were the companions of the trench or the ditch Allah Azza wa Jal starts the surah with this oath started the surah with an oath about something that is huge, the planets. And if you recollect, we said that when Allah Azza wa Jal swears in the Quran, it is either to indicate that what is following is something uh, of value or important or to be highlighted, or to indicate the value of what is being sworn with. In this case, it is the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, or some of the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, i.e. the planets, the great uh, planets. وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَوْعُودِ And by the promised day. Allah Azza wa Jal here is referring to the uh, day of judgment, the day when the balances or the balance, the scale, will uh, weigh everything, will people take their uh, due rights from others, whoever wronged another, he will find the recompense, whoever was wronged will take his rights on the day uh, of judgment. Allah Azza wa Jal gave respite to people, delayed them until that promised day, that day when he promised people to get their rights back. وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ And by the witness and what is witnessed. Another uh, oath by Allah Azza wa Jal. By the witness and what is witnessed. In the book of Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi and it is also in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad and it was classified as sound by Al-Albani. Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه narrated that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said the promised day is the day of judgment. Uh, the witness day is the day of Arafah. And the witness is the day of uh, Jumu'ah. The, uh, the swearing or the oath of Allah Azza wa Jal is actually a threat. Because what is being sworn by is are these issues. But after this oath, a person expects something. <coughs> this thing in this, in this surah is that Allah is swearing that the people of the trench, the companions of the trench, the companions of the ditch will be destroyed. Are cursed. Although it is an oath regarding a particular event or incident, which is in this case the, the event or the incident of the, uh, the trench, or the ditch, uh, yet it is general. It is a general threat to the, to the people of Quraysh 
lest they face the same fate as those of the people of the ditch or the trench. Al-Qurtubi rahmatullah alayhi said regarding the uh, witness, he said, every day and every night are witnesses. They are witnesses against mankind. See, on the day of judgment, we'll have many things testifying against us. The witnesses will be plenty from within ourselves. Allah Azza wa Jal says, اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يعملون. Today we will seal their mouths and their arms and their legs will testify as to what they were doing. Not only that, your own skin will testify against you. وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا They will tell their skins, why did you testify against us? Why were you witnesses against us? Why did you talk? Why did you speak out against us? قَالُوا أَنْطَقَنَا اللَّهِ الَّذِي أَنْطَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ They will say, Allah made us speak out. He, the one who made everything, speak out. The land, earth, that you walk on, that you commit good deeds or evil deeds on, will speak out. This famous surah, Surah Al-Zalzala, يَوْمَ إِذِنْ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا On that day, it will speak out, it will tell its news. What's the news? It will say, so and so did such and such on, on me or in that particular spot or area. So everything will be a witness on that day. Qutila ashabul ukhdud. Destroyed or cursed are the companions. The destruction of the criminals, the oppressors. See the surah in the surah Allah Azza wa Jal connects the skies with its planets, the day of judgment and its events. These great events, these horrifying events, and uh, the, the process of testimony and witnesses here and there, and everybody getting his rights, everybody getting their recompense for what they've done. The, all of this is connected with the incident or the event of the trench or the ditch. And uh, a clear announcement of the wrath and anger of Allah Azza wa Jal against those people. Indicating that though this is something that happened during a certain period, this was way before the time of the Prophet Sallallahu right? And it, although this story in totality has ended, yet its impact will be found on the Day of Judgment. Its consequence will be faced on the Day of Judgment. What is the story of the people of the ditch or the trench? It's a long story that is reported by Imam uh, At-Tirmidhi and classified as uh, authentic by Al-Albani, uh, narrated by Suhaib radiallahu anhu. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us about a king one of the kings in the past who used to have a fortune teller who grew very old and informed the king that I am at the verge of death. I'm about to die. I'm very old. So find a young man, a young boy for me who is brilliant, who is smart, who can learn fast so I can teach him my knowledge so he will inherit it and be in my place, replace me after my death. So they searched and they found that young boy. So the young boy used to go to the uh, fortune teller. Uh, and on his way, he would pass by a monk in his hermitage. 
who is worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal? Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who is worshiping Allah alone? He was upon monotheism. So, one time he stopped and started listening to the monk. So he liked what he heard. So he asked him, he said, I worship only one God. So the boy decided that every day on his way to the fortune teller, he would stop by the monk, learn from him, and then go to the fortune teller. So the fortune teller, after a while, started complaining that this boy comes very late. So he informed his family, his family punished him. So the monk told him, next time you go late, and the fortune teller asks you, where you were, tell him I was with my family. And if your family asks you, ask you where you were, you tell them you were with the fortune teller this way, they will not find out. So after a period, the, the monk saw that the boy has learned everything. He said, son, you've learned a lot and you will be tested. And you need to speak out, meaning convey the message. But you will be tested if you were ever caught. Don't tell about me. So one day when he was going to the monk, there was a huge gathering. People were uh, on the road, afraid because there was a beast. And one of the narrations said that the beast was actually a lion. And they said, who can save us from this lion? Who can make it move? So the boy said, this is the day I test what I have. So he grabbed the rock and he said, Oh Allah, if what I believe is, in, is true, if what I believe in is true, kill this lion. And he threw the rock and killed the lion. So the news of the boy spread. So a blind man heard of him and he said, I heard that you did this and that. So... I will give you this much and that much if you just bring back my sight to me. He said, I don't want anything from you. I just want you to worship Allah alone if I bring your sight back to you with the command of Allah Azza wa Jal. I will supplicate Allah and he will bring your sight to you. He said, I agree. So he supplicated Allah for him and he regained his, uh, his eyesight. So the news spread in the entire village until it reached the uh, king. At that, he brought the boy and he tortured him. No, he brought the uh, blind and then he brought the boy. And the boy told about the monk. The monk was taken. He said, the king said, I'm going to kill all of you in different ways. So he ordered that the monk and the blind person, after they refused to go back from what they were worshipping, he to, to have a saw placed on their, on their heads and split them in two halves, which they did. As for the boy, he said, I'm going to kill you in a different way. He ordered the soldiers to take him to the highest peak of a mountain and throw him from there. So they surely did. They uh, climbed the mountain. Allah caused the mountain to shake. All the soldiers fell down and died. And the boy stepped down, walked into the king, and he said, what? You're still alive? He said, yes, Allah killed your soldiers and kept me alive. So he commanded that the boy be taken into a boat in the middle of the uh, sea and be thrown to, drown to death. And they did. Allah Azza wa Jal caused the, the, the boat to shake with wind and waves and all that. Everybody fell from the boat, drowned to death, and the boy went back to the king and uh, the king was amazed and the boy told him there is there is only one way to kill me that way is that you grab grab an arrow and say bismillah in the name of allah the lord of the young boy and shoot this is the only way you can kill me so the, the uh, king wanting this story to end he's already had two people believed in addition to that young boy that's three that can become a uh, trend and people could become believers altogether and he would lose his uh, position as a king. He would have no subjects, right? So he said, Bismillah, 
Rabbil Ghulam. And he shot the arrow. And he struck the boy right here. And the boy died and he placed his hand like this. As the narration describes. He placed his hand between his eye and his this area between the eye and the ear and he died as it is as he was at that all people became believers so people the followers the close followers of the king they said you were scared because of three people now the entire village became believers so he commanded a big hole a big ditch to be dug and they filled it with wood and they uh, started a huge fire and they gave the people an ultimatum. You either reject your faith, go back on your faith, or you will be thrown into that ditch. And everybody started willingly going into the ditch. One of the narrations said, subhanAllah, that a mother having her infant, her suckling infant, was at the edge and she became reluctant. She has her suckling child. SubhanAllah, the mercy of the mother, the heart of the mother is indescribable. So Allah made that infant speak out and say, O oh mother, remain steadfast and go in. And she did. It is said that during the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, for some reason they had to get, dig where the boy was, was buried. The, the, the young boy was buried. And that they, they found the boy as he was in the same position with his hand on his face. Now, Qutila ashab al Destroyed and cursed are the companions of the church. This is a, a severe statement indicating the anger and wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal against those who did this uh, vicious killing, uh, this heartless killing to the people and to the ugliness of the manner these people uh, were killed. And then Allah Azza wa Jal in the following verses gives uh, some indication as to some of the things that took place. Uh, containing, speaking about that ditch, containing uh, the fire full of fuel when they were sitting around it. And they were watching what they did to the believers, burning them, that is. So Allah Azza wa Jal is describing the ditch with fire. The scholar said this is to indicate the size, the huge size of that fire. So instead of talking about the ditch itself, the speech turned to be about the fire. So the ditch became the fire as huge as that fire uh, was. <coughs> And then Allah Azza wa Jal describes the, the behavior of those who burnt the believers. They were sitting around the fire watching the believers with joy. They were watching what the fire did to the flesh and bodies of these believers. Enjoying the scene of seeing people being burnt alive. This is just ugly. This is unhuman. This is... You can just name that anything you want. This is not just inhuman. This is... Animals don't do that. I mean, animals have mercy at times more than humans do. Because this is just... A, 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 I don't know what word to use for the type of perse persecution of, uh, and killing that was done uh, and practiced against the believers in that. وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ and they resented them not except because they believed in Allah, the exalted in might, 
the praiseworthy. So the only crime these people committed was to believe in Allah. They had no sin, no guilt, no previous enmity with those who punished them or tortured them. The only sole reason was their belief in Allah Azza wa Al Aziz, and look at the ending. Look at the ending of the uh, of the verse. Al Aziz, the exalted in might, meaning the one who is able to do anything. Al Hamid, the praiseworthy, the one who deserves praise in all situations, regardless of what it is, even during such tough times. Right. And now I just want to point out something here. That this story is nothing but a sample of what all believers face throughout time, throughout history, and up until now. What happens is that tyrants first try to turn you away Turn the believers away from faith, from the right path. Using all means, propaganda like in the, in the form of media now, right? Like Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِن يَفْقَفُوكُمْ يَكُونُوا لَكُمْ أَعْدَاءً وَيَبْسُطُوا إِلَيْكُمْ أَيْدِيَهُمْ وَأَلْسِنَتَهُمْ بِالسُّوءٍ They use their hands and their tongues to wrong you, to go against you, to speak against you. To intimidate others against you. So, they first try that. If they can't, if they're unsuccessful, then they will go into the physical torture, imprisonment, torturing you. If that doesn't work, they will reach that final stage of actually killing people. Those who are upon the truth need to be ready to face that. Because you see, the real victory is not to win a battle, but rather the real victory is to be able to remain firm on what you believe in despite hardships and regardless of torture. Because the real victory is to win the pleasure of Allah and the Jannah of Allah. We must remember that this life is a, is a very short interim stage on the way to Jannah, inshaAllah. So we need to put up with anything that comes on the way because of our faith. We need to tolerate that and take it with contentment for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. الَّذِي لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ To whom belongs, after the conclusion with Al-Aziz uh, Al-Hamid, the uh, exalted in might, the praiseworthy, to whom belongs the uh, dominion of the heavens and the earth, and Allah over all things is witness. So Allah Azza wa is the one who is in full control and in charge of the heavens and earth, and He sees, He's all seeing, all knowing, He sees everything that's taken place. He sees you, O oh believers, when you are tortured for His sake. And he is seeing you, O oh, oppressors and tyrants, when you're wronging the believers because of their faith. Again, consoling the believers that this is being seen, and your tolerance and patience and perseverance is being recorded, and you will be rewarded for it. And as for you, disbelievers, this is being recorded, and you will be punished for it. You will be punished for your torture of the believers because of faith. 
Let us conclude this session with this verse, and we will continue the following verse, the session in the uh, with the following verses. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, shadu Allah, ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka tublik.